Hello, you beautiful maniacs out there. My name is Joshua James, and with me is my longtime good buddy, Richard. Welcome back, brother. Hello. We are back reviewing another Dark Side of the Ring documentary, and it's about Herb Abrams and the UWF. Now, Richard, what did you think about this documentary? I enjoyed it. I, I'm, I must admit, the actual correct title of the episode made me laugh when I saw it. You know, cocaine and cowboy boots. <laughs> All right. By the time it finished, all right, that pretty much just sums it up. Yeah. I bet we missed some of the word that. strippers. Yeah. I bet when you first saw that, Tyler, you were probably like thinking, like, cowboy boots, what? I mean, I sure did because I didn't get the cowboy boot thing until I saw the documentary. Yeah, I must admit, I was like, okay, this, this this bit's got me intrigued. What's uh, And uh, obviously, like you say, everything became apparent. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but yeah, no, it were an interesting episode. Yeah, it was really interesting. Like, did you ever watch any UWF? No, I didn't have access to it. Oh, uh, okay. Now, I was too late to watch it. I, I only started, like I told you earlier, I watched reruns of it when I was living with my parents, like, back in high school. I saw it was on, never heard of the UWF until I looked at until I watched it. I was like, oh, Paul Orndorff, Cowboy Bob Orn. Okay, I'll watch it, yeah. And it was kind of crappy, but, uh, hey, I still enjoyed watching it. I'll fully admit it. I enjoyed I still, and, uh, and then I don't know so I was like, hey, Dr. Dan. I was like, okay, you got my intrigue. I'm in, into it now. And I didn't know anything about the UWF until I found out there's two UWFs. There's Mid South and Herb Abrams UWF. Yeah, yeah, I knew there were the uh, Bill Watts. Yeah, you see that that's what could have made it confusing as well. The cowboy boots and cowboy Bill Watts. Oh, um, okay. I didn't think of that. That's what could have confused some people who might not have been in the know. But obviously, me and you knew which one it was because we discussed it. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we never got access to it over here. Um, you know, it's just the, the one sad thing about the UK, we were pretty limited in the 90s. We've got WWF, WCW, and if you were lucky, ECW. Mm, okay, yeah. Like like I said, I was too late on watching the UWF because I was just watching reruns. And now I got to learn more about the UWF, especially Herb Rabins. What did you think of him? What did you think of Mr. Herb? such a character right <laughs> yeah i mean the guy had ambition you've got to give him that yeah um, wanting to you know beat the wwf i mean it's like you know others had tried others had failed but he weren't going to let that put him off no and also one thing like you said earlier at least he tried yeah he, he you know he had to go and who knows if it hadn't been for his demons he might have uh might have had a better go of it, but it's like they said, a lot of them said in documentary that the TV tapings and the pay-per-view just weren't, it, it were thinking bigger than what the war they needed to start and build up. But he just went, it's like that guy said he started at the top and just went down from there. Instead of starting at the bottom and going up, he went the opposite way around. It's funny all the things they were saying what Herb did is like, it's kind of like current WWE now, actually. <laughs> Well, empty arenas, yeah. <laughs> oh, ouch. <laughs> but, okay, we said, we're saying, though, yeah, I mean, they had a 17,000 seater arena and there were sold 300 tickets. So they got 1,600 seats for him and Snooker to go uh, fighting in. But that's another thing, though. The guy got some major names there. Like you said, okay. Dr. Death, Paul Orndorff, Cowboy Bob Orton. Um, he had Jimmy Snooker, Cactus Jack, Andre oh, Bruno, Reaper, Samartino. Bruno Sammartino on commentary. Um, who else were there? There were um, Don Andre, Morocco. Don Morocco. Yeah, I saw him. He was in the video package that showed. One, um, Andre. Showed him, yeah, Andre. Yeah, so briefly, and then Vince got him back, didn't he, straight away? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, he had some big names. I'd be Brian Blair. Yeah, killer bees. But you remember, remember the killer bees? Yeah, and he <laughs> saw the honey cookies. <laughs> yeah, the... um, but that was another thing as well that he did. That, um, like they said at the time, were pioneering. He went into the merchandise side of things, you know, selling t-shirts and like 
WWE had ice cream bars. He had cookies for some reason, but, you know, do what you think is going to work. But, you know, the guy had ambition. He knew what he wanted to do. It was just... I, I felt like he had the mind for it. I think he did. It's just that uh, yeah. his um, demons controlled him more than uh, what was going on. Yeah, definitely. He, he could have been something. Maybe not comp- compete with the WWE. That was one rule that he kind of wanted. Like, he really wanted to compete with him. I think he should have never tried and just yeah, focused on just, Jeff more than... Yeah, putting out a good product and building his company up. Yeah, just starting to take out, trying to take out the biggest name in business. Yeah, it's never gonna happen. I mean, I mean, he like think about it. Like, he was trying to compete with a guy who had Hulk Hogan, Bret Hart, The Ultimate Warrior, Jake the Snake Roberts, Ted DiBiase, Macho Man, those names, and these sold out crowds, the uh, Hart Foundation, Demolition, The Road Warriors, and all. All, all that massive fan base world over. All the massive successful pay per views behind him, so and because he from. turned him, he turned Herb Abrams down for running, you know, under UWF banner or whatever. Yeah, like maybe like uh, like if Herb didn't have his demons, maybe he could have tried working with maybe like with Eastern Championship Wrestling. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he could have just concentrated on putting some out that were good. Focused on building it up, and then who knows? He could have got offers from other companies. Yeah, like uh, like he could have just went up to um, I don't know who was running Eastern Championship Wrestling at the time. I know it wasn't Paul Heyman. Todd um, Gordon. Who? Todd Gordon. Uh, Todd Gordon. Um, Probably will have been. Hot stuff, hot stuff. Eddie Gilbert. Eddie Gilbert. Yes. Yeah, and um, he could have just gone up to them. And he's like, "Hey, I'm a new wrestling company. I'm." Trying to work with somebody, maybe we could work together, like do exactly. like a like a invasion show or your your show versus my show kind of thing. Maybe yeah, like ECW did with USWA. Yeah, so they could have done like something like that. He's like, we could probably do that. Yeah, Not UWF stuff. versus ECW. Yeah, yeah if, if it had concentrated on that, the possibility. Can, can you imagine a match with Doctor Death, Steve Williams, and Sabu? Holy shit. <laughs> right? That UWF would have been interesting. UW, UWF cactus, versus You'd have had Cactus Jack versus Terry Funk as well. Oh, that was great. Always good matches. Yeah, they they, 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 always had, they always had classic matches. And even Mick Foley even said, like in the documentary, he was going to be facing one of his heroes, Jimmy Snooker, in the match. Yeah, he got to wrestle Snooker, didn't he? Yeah, but the match was garbage, he even made it. Like, it wasn't good at all. Well, I didn't. I said it had all them empty seats to go and play in, didn't they? So mm-hmm. they were like, Saki Woods go and fight outside for a bit. And you think with a match between Snuka and Cactus Jack, great match. It would have been like something to talk about, right? Like for ages. Yeah, yeah you definitely think that they'd want to try and keep it in a ring where the you know, crowd could see rather than go off. Yeah. Stands where nobody could see or very few people could. Yeah, but now it's just like it's just sad to know like two great legends, like one guy looking up to the other guy. It was kind of like a student versus the teacher type of match. Like it, Cactus could have won the match. I don't even remember who won. But, no, it was a double, double count out. Yeah, double count out. Double count out. Yeah, like oh, double Cactus, DQ or something one eight like that. Something like that. But they could have had like Cactus Jack winning and um, Superfly passing the torch to him. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, there's there's any number of possibilities that could have gone, but, you know, it, it, it tried too hard to take out the the uh, the big company and it backfired and, you know, it should have just concentrated on building up UWF and getting it a, rep, a big uh, reputation and what have you, but... They could have done so much. I mean, like, it's just, it's really a shame, too. Like, uh, her... He looks like a nice guy when he's not on drugs, but he looks, he looks like a nice guy. Well, at, at the end, they all said, you know, you, when you listen to him all talking, not one of them had a bad word to say about him. And, you know, a lot of them have been in that same situation as ECW guys, like with Paul Heyman, where, you know, the checks have bounced for matches, you know, they, they weren't getting paid. But, but there's yeah, a difference. Still, there's a difference. But, yeah, but still, not one of them had a bad word to say about him. Yeah, that, that's know. true. Like, uh, 
he heard bounce checks, but what a lot of people had a lot of good things to say about him. But yeah. Paul Heyman did the exact same thing. But there's a lot of people who don't like Paul Heyman still. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it took a while before Tommy Dreamer and all them ever hoped to do with him again, wasn't it? But you, you listen to all them speaking at the end of that documentary, and they've all got fond memories of him. Not one of them, you know, had anything really bad to say. You know, like, oh, you were a bastard or all like that. It were, you know, you were a character. I'll always remember this. I'll always remember that. And, you know, I mean, there were that, that guy who were in tears, wasn't he? Because he's like, he was the one that believed in me. Yeah, you know, he was the one that gave me the chance, and it was like that one quite, you know. Stevie Ray, not Booker T's brother. <laughs> yeah, a uh, different Steve Ray. Yeah, um, but, but yeah, yeah I mean, he was the one that wanted to, uh, Abraham told him, We're going to make you a star. Yeah, that ending, I'm not gonna lie, it made me kind of emotional a little bit, just thinking like this guy was so loved, and like yeah. he, he did a lot of horrible stuff, but a lot of people said, like. I love the guy. I can't say nothing bad about him. He and like Steve Ray said, he's like he believed in me. Like, how can I hate him? He gave yeah, me his chance. I mean, he, he done shit things, he bounced checks and what have you. But not one of them could think of anything bad to say about him. And that that to me speaks volumes. Yeah, like uh, like I said, maybe like he was misunderstood. Maybe like that. Maybe he was misunderstood. Like how a lot of fans, because a lot of fans like to make jokes about Herb and. Uh, I mean, like, I get why they would make jokes about him, but at the same time, when I'm watching this, like, he was misunderstood. Yeah, it, it was just, it, it, he aimed too high too soon. Yeah. And he were getting arenas that were too big for their audience, and that's that were affecting him as well, because they were having, a, like they said, having a dim arena lights, weren't they? So it didn't, you couldn't see all empty seats. Maybe it should just start like you, a conference. Yeah, it makes your, pro, your pro, product look dingy then, doesn't it? And that's the last thing you want. So, you know, but uh, yeah, like we said, the guy had ambition. He knew what he wanted to do. Yeah, true. What did you think of the um, the UWF television title? I liked it. I did. Uh, the the, where they showed you it out and then... And the guy folded it over and you could see the F and the U and he said, oh, that were a, a direct message to Vince McMahon. Now, I never knew that. I mean, I, I always kind of made jokes about it. I say, hey, it says F U on it. That's hilarious. But now knowing the backstory of it, it's like, I love that belt even more now. It's just well, like... Yeah, I did the first time I'd ever seen it. So to me, he just folded it over and I never even noticed. I was too busy looking at the main plate and thinking, yeah, that's quite a nice belt. And then when he said, oh, and if you look, the F and the U are there, and it's a direct message to Vince McMahon, I was like, oh, crap, yeah. It's brilliant. Yeah, that, I mean, it? probably wouldn't have noticed that. Then, so no. It's brilliant. It's I love yeah. it. I want that belt. I do want that belt. Yeah, it, it is a cool belt. It's a, a very good design as well for its time. For a, I also like name, name a championship belt that you ever seen with the, the side plates are the letters of your company. Have you ever seen a belt like that before? I can't think. No, that's all I think, honestly say. That's the first time I've seen it like exactly. that. Yeah, I, I've never seen a championship belt with their side plates or the letters of their company. I've, on, I've only seen side plates that are, like, decorated with the letters on it, like their logo yeah. on it, but never, like, how the UWF tile is. No, and, I've never seen it like that before. I, I honestly can't think of anything. I can't think of anything either, like, uh, besides just that one. Like, But... Um, if no, anybody out there does know, put a yeah, picture. Yeah, send it like put a picture or leave a comment and let us know. Link to it. Yeah, like uh, yeah, educate us. Oh, let, let us know like on Twitter or something like that. Like like you said, educate us because yeah, I there's a lot of things we may know a lot about wrestling, but there's some things out there that we are still kind of learning too. Oh yeah, we we still need an education at times. <laughs> yeah, true. Like uh, like. The one thing they did do good about the UWF is they did have young and new talent, pretty much. I mean, like, they had Cactus Jack, they had Steve Ray, and, like, they had some, like, Dr. Jack before he went to the Brawl for All, which is funny. We talked about him twice now on our, on our reviews. Yeah, I was just going to, I was trying to work out if that were um, pre or post bat gun knockout, but it were pre, wasn't it? Um, looking at the time frame. Um... So yeah, I mean, yeah, we, I mean, so they had some pretty big names, and they had some guys that, 
you know, like you said, them young couple, the guys that were on the documentary that itself, that you know, were I suppose his homegrown talent that he put in there, and uh, then there were all the the established names that had signed from you know various other organizations in Stamford, Connecticut. Yeah, and, and one thing is, like, he tried talking to him. Herb tried to talk to Vince, they mentioned in the documentary. Yeah. Like, yes, yeah, it, it was something about working together, wasn't it? And having Vince having one coast and then Herb having the other one, but having Vince's talent wrestle under the UWF banner and Vince just told him where to go. So that was the thing that lit the fire, wasn't it? Where he wanted to just absolutely destroy WWF, and it's like too well established by that point. Yeah, I mean, and also thinking like um, Vince probably laughed when Herb said that, and that's probably what triggered him the most is that he was laughing about it. Yeah, I'm just yeah, guessing. It, I don't know if that's true or not, but it's just a guess. Yeah, I mean, they, they said that he just waved him off and what have you, and I would imagine that knowing what Vince is like from what we've heard and stuff in other documentaries, that you know, it would have been a case of yeah, he, he might have waved him off and. It's so funny. It's so funny the amount of times we've talked about or watched the Dark Side of the Ring documentary. Vince is always involved. Yeah, he always seems to be in there, doing his names, always getting brought up, and you know he's 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 in there, and it's uh, you know it'll it'll pop up out of nowhere. It's so weird, like thinking like, is Vince really this evil? evil person or something and when you think about it, it's like yeah, he can be that's one thing i do know he can be yeah. but when it comes to business he knows what he's doing yeah that's true like um i don't like vince very well but i do respect him for what he's done with the wwe you, you, you can't help but respect yeah. him but the this thing this documentary it just makes me think like like we kept saying herb could have done so much for the uwf if his demons yeah. did not control him like there's nothing you said they they didn't have what was the other thing they didn't have um a, a union was it no they um they had I can't remember now i don't remember either i remember you saying something like he had i was saying that he had ambition he had it just went he aimed too high at first and he rather than just start small and build it up. Yeah. And, and build up a you know, a, a good fan base and, you know, take it from there. He just went straight for the top and you can't do that. Yeah, good ideas, it were just too high too soon. Yeah, like like I he said, he aimed a bit above his is like how did they word it in the documentary now? They were grasping beyond his reach or somehow reaching beyond his grasp, one of them too. That basically saying that he would, you know, he was trying to run before he could walk, sort of thing. You know, he, he would trying to start too high up, but you know, if he just started small, and known, and set out a plan with what he wanted to do, it's a deal in the case of who knows what could have been. You know, it it could have been the big three, could have been you know WWF, WCW, UWF. Yeah, definitely. It's just that uh, we know how well. In the documentary, it says they don't know how, like, how he died, but he did die from a drug overdose. Drug overdose. Yeah, there was definitely cocaine involved, wasn't there? From that's that's a guaranteed, consistent factor all the way through the, the stories part, of his death. Yeah, and the part that was kind of the the part of the documentary that was also kind of sad made me sad is they showed the last clip of him alive. Yeah, when you were showing them people around the office. And he looked happy. He looked extremely happy. He looked... Yeah, and the, I mean, the, the woman in the video says to me, happy. He's like, yeah, I'm happier than I've ever been. And it was like, you know, and then it weren't long after that at all, was it, that, you know, I found out he went missing and then next thing you know, he's dead. Yeah. Like, when the part that hurt, they, they announced him dead, they, they even said, like, maybe he faked his own death. But, yeah, because there was that bit at end, wasn't there, about um, the guy who'd worked for him, who knew of a promoter near him, and he were rest at a company with, you know, named UWF, and this short guy in cowboy boots and jeans and turned up and read it right out, saying, you know, that's, that's my company's name and all this sort of stuff. 
Um, but like Mick Foley turned around and said, there's no way that he's been alive for 30 years and not tried to get himself in limelight again. Yeah, like, but, he couldn't stay quiet for 30 years. Yeah, well, I mean, who knows? I mean, they had them two bank accounts. He had one that had multi- millions of dollars in. All it takes is, you know, slip enough money to write two coppers, you mm-hmm. know, get a death certificate issued and then go and live somewhere else and yeah, keep but, red, you know, but... But uh, the one thing I the the part that made me sad is the the his best friend when he started tearing up and uh, same with Steve Ray just like you know seeing them tear up is like it made me sad just you know yeah it showed just how much he meant to a lot of people mm-hmm. yeah so, um, like you said the, the guy who, who was his best mate um, I mean when he was saying oh, I, I refuse to think he believe he's alive because I know he would have come and found me or got word to me and it's like. No, I'm sorry if he has faked his own death so he can get out of when avoid people who he owed money to. He's not going to drop you a message saying, oh, you know, by the way, I'm actually alive, but, you know, I need to stay because he's not. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I'd seen, like you said, to see them tearing up and that, it, it showed you just how much he did mean to people. Yeah. He might have been crazy. Well, he was crazy and uh, drugged up, but he did mean a lot to a lot of people. That's like, it. He, he, you know, he, he, yeah, like you say, he meant a lot to him. You know, he, he gave some of them the, the big chance and, you know, put others on TV, gave others that might not have managed to get jobs anywhere. He gave them a job, put them back on TV. Yeah. So he weren't a bad guy. He was just some wrong life choices mm-hmm. and uh one thing about like what brian blair said that he, herb did what he he got to do what he loved loved the most hookers and cocaine yeah he went out doing what he loved the most yeah yeah and if that's your thing it's not a bad way to go yeah well the cocaine part then i, I don't know yeah no, i'd i'd rather go face first in a chocolate cake yeah, me too. <laughs> but uh, the one thing I liked, it was like Mick Foley's last words. If Herb Abrams was still alive, what do you think he'd be doing right now? Yeah, time. And I agree. I think he would be doing time, actually. Yeah, he, he does seem like he'd be one of them characters that'd be done for, um, you know, tax fraud, tax evasion, something like that. Yeah. And I love what Mick says, like, I, I and I would go visit him. And yeah. T- Toast with milk and have some Herbie cookies. <laughs> yeah, Herbie cookies. And, and just hearing that uh, uh, after an emotional ending, it came it gave us a good laugh. I was like, okay, thank you. I really did need that. That's really yeah. Awesome. So I've ended episode with a smile on your face, and it really were. Yeah, because yeah. he could hear a the background as well while you were filming. They were all laughing their heads off. Oh yeah, they were laughing so hard. I mean, I laughed, too. Like, I laughed extremely hard when I heard that, too, because, like I said, like, we both could agree. We both could see it. We could see it. Oh. Yeah, definitely. I, you, like I said, he's the sort of character you can see getting locked up for. Oh, yeah. You know, like, Al Capone, they couldn't touch him for anything else, so they got him for tax evasion. Not, you know, <laughs> they couldn't do him for, you know, hiring prostitutes or the copious amounts of cocaine that he always had kicking about. Yeah. But get him on tax. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, here's a one question. Um, Solid Monster, by the way, go subscribe to him. Uh, he, I saw him reviewing the documentary. He was doing his version of the review, and he mentioned that he gets, <laughs> he gets laughed at for saying he thinks Herb should go in the Hall of Fame. Do you think Herb Apron should go in the Hall of Fame? Which Hall of Fame? Cause I don't think he can go in WWE one, would he? Because he didn't really have what to do with them. They tend to stick to people who've done something. Well, like, I mean, look at Vern Gagne. Yeah, he was not in the WWE and he got in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. So that was on his contribution to wrestling, wasn't it? So, yeah. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's a, it's a tricky one. Did he contribute much? You know, I mean... He started a company and, you know, it didn't quite work out. So, I mean, working on that theory, could you put everybody who tried? But I think, it, 
I have to say, I think he should go into a Hall of Fame, a Wrestling Hall of Fame, WWE or Wrestling Hall of Fame in general. I, because, like, like we said, it, it, UWF, it didn't work out, but at least he tried. But I think he deserves it. I know drug problems. I know he had a drug problem and all that kind of stuff. But I don't think he should be forgotten. I think he should get recognized for the job he did for wrestling, even if it was yeah. bad. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it will be forgotten because Lincoln, seeing like we said, how fun and them people we worked with spoke about him. Um, but yeah, I mean, if yeah, there should, there'll be some sort of Hall of Fame he'd qualify for surely. Um, so I don't see WWE putting him in theirs, but I do I, think I, that I think they would. They try to get noise and uh, and all that kind of stuff because that's what WWE likes to do. I mean, like they put Drew. Curry in the Hall of Fame. Remember that? Oh, yes. Yeah, he went on Celebrity Wing, though, didn't he, as it were? Even though he made one appearance? Yeah. But the, uh, the celebrity side's a bit slim pickings, isn't it, really? Well, here's the thing. I know a lot of people did not like the fact Arnold was going in, but Arnold did do a lot for wrestling. I mean, he yeah, was... I mean, uh, he, he, he's been a few times and stuff. Yeah, he slapped Triple H. He got to work with um, Bruno San Martino in bodybuilding. Yeah. Um, and also, I, I remember... Did you ever watch the Andre the Giant documentary? No. Oh, you should. You should. It's really good. Arnold's in it. And he talks about him hanging out with Andre. And uh, they went out to dinner one time. And uh, the, bill, the bill showed up. And he, Arnold's going to pay for it. But Andre said, I pay. And he's like, no, you're my, you're the guest. I pay. And he's, he picked him up literally like he was a rag doll. He picked Arnold like he was a doll. Is that on the DVD documentary? Um, I don't know if it's on. A, it's on the network. I know that for a fact. Oh, so I've got an Andre one on DVD, but I haven't got around to watching it yet. Okay. It, it's, is it the HBO documentary? I don't know. It's the WWE one that they released okay. years ago. Okay, uh, let me know. But here, uh, I do recommend you checking the Andre the Giant documentary. It's it's really a good story. Um, but here's some news I, I found out. It was last year, I believe. Last year or a year before that. I don't remember. The UWF made a return. Oh, cool. The, the same... same. The same logo... And the same TV tile. The TV tile is back for the UWF. It's in California. They're not doing shows now because of this whole thing. Um, but yeah, the UWF made a return. Cool. I don't know who the champion is, but I just know they crowned the new champion. It's probably Dr. Death. Uh, Dr. Death passed away. He passed away, I don't remember what year. You don't mean he can't still be champion. He's always Look been. How many champion. times vacant's been a world champion? He doesn't even exist. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> uh, no, Doctor Dead's always been a champion. He's probably a champion right now in heaven. He's probably beating the crap out of somebody up there right now. Oh yeah. Or him and him and Herb are probably just eating some cookies, probably. Yeah. Herb but I, I, one thing is, I know that they crowned a new champion. I just don't know who the guy is. I don't remember. I didn't even look it up. I, I forgot to look it up. Well, that <laughs> might be something worth trying to check out then. See if we can find some of that to watch. Yeah, uh, I, I'll look. I'll look. I, I no promises, but uh, yeah, they have a Facebook page. Go like their Facebook page. At the end. And and um, I, when I first found out the UWL was making the return, I was like, I want to go. I want to go see a, a UWF show. Because like since with Herb Apron says so like um, I like I want to know if his, if he has any kids and is working for them I want to know because if they did mention he was married in a dark so I said I don't remember that I remember him mentioning his mom but I don't remember. I'm assuming his wife was the blonde woman with him in that photo I think so I don't remember but the one thing I did know is that he was married I don't remember if they mentioned it on the documentary or not. But in interviews, they have mentioned it before they... I don't remember anything in documentary about it, but I do remember mentioning his mom. And then there were a picture of him with some tall blonde woman. 
but she didn't look like the sort of women you're usually associated with. Okay. I don't remember. Um, I have to look it up again. But um, anyways, yeah, that's pretty much our review of the UWF. There's a lot of things we did not mention because we've always said this. We want you guys to go watch it for yourselves. We don't want to spoil uh, too much. We did that with the Brawl for All. We don't want to do that again because there wasn't really that much to talk about the Brawl for All. No. I mean, we talked about what happened to the Brawl for All and then we did a fantasy booking. Yeah. We kind of did that a little bit for here too, like what they could have done with like Eastern Championship Wrestling and all. We kind of did, so. Yeah. A little. But, um, Anyways, what what is your final thoughts on this documentary? I, I really enjoyed this episode. I found it, you know, it was really, really enlightening. It, you know, it put him in a good light, even though he had, obviously, like we said, his, his drug issues. Um, and like I said, you can't fault the guy for his ambition, wanting to go straight after a big company. Looking back, obviously, that were a mistake. You, you start off and you concentrate on building your brand up and then take it from there, move it up sort of step by step but um other than that you know i mean like we said even though checks were bounced and you know people weren't paid nobody at the end had a bad word to say about him and to me that that speaks volumes about the guy you know it, it were obviously loved i mean you could tell when they were all getting upset at end and you know when like that his best mate said when he was ringing around all these wrestlers and you could hear them all crying he says all these really big guys and that's and they were all in tears on phone you know, he says, and it, it were just really emotional. And you can, that said it all to me that, you know, the guy were obviously really, really well thought of. And it comes across a lot in documentary. And you could feel their pain, too. You could definitely feel it. when. Yeah, they, you could see that they were all genuinely upset about it. And, you know, they all, I mean, they were all quick to admit about his drug issues. Um, But I suppose that's just one of them things, isn't it? It's... You know, it is what it is. It, everybody has their own sort of vice, demon, however you want to call it. But, um, yeah, I mean, they, they, they all missed him. And, you know, there's that guy who, that showed him at his grave talking to him. The guy who, um, I can't remember, yeah, that's Sunny Sunny Beach or something, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, um, he, he was another one of his guys that he built up when he one of his own grown talent. And he still goes to his grave regular and stuff. So, I mean, obviously, he's, you know, he's, he's obviously left his mark on a lot of people's lives. Yeah, I just, you know, hearing this, I mean, like, I know this sounds like you know, this is the fan in me pretty much. Just makes me wish that he was still alive. I would love to talk to Herb, interview him on the show. I would love to talk to him. You know, just, like, ask him questions mostly. Like, like just this made me wish I could go back in time and just to talk to him. Or go to one of the shows. I would love to go on. Even yeah, though the shows are probably going to be crap, but it's still been, like, a lot of fun to go to. Yeah, it, it, it would definitely have been an experience to interview, I would imagine. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, um, like but like I said, I don't think Herb Abram should never be forgotten. And uh, I don't think he ever will. I think... It's um, it's one of them things you'll always remember for UWF and you know its shortcomings, but at the end of the day, at least the guy had the balls to try. True, like I don't, I couldn't do that. I could never do that. Like it, would be too much pressure to run a wrestling company. And, and that's it what I, like a lot of them said though, ain't because he were a massive wrestling fan, and that's what went against him. You know, it, it just booked stuff that he liked and it's like you can't do that and it, it changed stuff like all flying that but you know the, the guy had ambition he had balls and you know he just fell short and um i i know it most likely probably will never happen but like i i said to you and everybody else i would like to see her baby go into the hall of fame which one either one maybe wwe or any type of hall of fame i think he deserves it I know he There's had to be a, a general wrestling hall of fame somewhere yeah. that you know it would be more than fitting. Oh yeah, into. I agree. Like, um, and if he ever does go into the WWE Hall of Fame, if he ever does, who should induct him? Oh, see, that's a good one. 
I know it can't be Dr. Death because unfortunately he's passed away. I would like to see Dr. Death go into the Hall of Fame. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm surprised. Mind you, he was only in WWE briefly when he went in, got knocked out, and left. But he did have a good career in Japan, though. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Well, you'd get to induct him. Probably that guy who played the Colonel character that he had the massive storyline going with. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because that was another thing he did that was slightly ahead of his time, wasn't it? He put himself in storylines. Yeah. But technically, he did that about six, seven years before Vince McMahon did. That's the funny part is that uh, he did the uh, the the, uh, the authority role way before Eric Bischoff and Vince. Yeah, he, he did the owner getting involved in stuff. Yeah, like I said, six or seven years before Vince did it. It makes me laugh when you think about when uh, when you think about it. It's like Herb Aprons did that first, and it's just like, and you never heard of it until now, and it's yeah. like. What? So Vince or Bischoff wasn't the first? This guy was? I mean, that's I one mean, thing I do. I don't know other people that have done it, but he yeah, true, said but... he was one of the first to do it on national telly. When in, yeah. to, they get involved in storylines and put himself in storylines and stuff. But Yeah, you're probably true. A lot of independent promotions, I know they do that. That's one thing. But that's normal for independent shows. Now, for national television, it was different back in the day. Yeah. Um, I think I know one person who sh- who could induct Herb in the Hall of Fame. Foley. Yeah, Mick Foley. I think he yeah. Could, huh? yeah, Foley would be a good. Or good Steve person Ray. Or Steve Ray, maybe him too. Yeah. Maybe have. Yeah, so like a, a couple of his own grown talent. Mm-hmm. You know, induct him, or like say if it has to be one person, I suppose Foley. Would be and while they're in, and while they're inducted them. They should have his uh, UWF cowboy boots next to them while they're making the speech. Yeah, the yellow ostrich skin ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Made me laugh when Foley mentioned that, that he's like, oh, this is going to blow everybody's minds tonight. And when he brought it out, it was a new pair of boots he was going to wear. And he's like, I knew something were wrong when he thought that were going to go down really well with crowd. It's like, no. And, it's, and I'm like, yeah, that, that would be ringing alarm bells to me as well, to be honest. Yeah, that would, that would be too. And also, while you're watching clips of him wearing the boots, you can barely read what they what they say. Exactly. You can only see bottom of letters underneath his trousers anyway. So Now, if he made a commercial announcing that we're selling these, then <laughs> that would make sense. But he just wear them, and no one knew what they were. Yeah, and they were just boots, and you could just see a little bit of... I mean, most people probably would have gathered with colouring it leather. Oh, yeah, he's got the UWF logo stitched onto his boots, but it's not exactly earth-shattering. No. But if they ever do do that for the WWE Hall of Fame, they should bring out his UWF boots and put them on the, the mic stand while they're making the speech. Yeah, or just a generic pair of Red Cowboy boots. That too, yeah. But I, I feel like it's the yellow boots. It should be the yellow boots more than what normally what he wears because I think that's more appropriate. Like I feel like that. Would... The um, I don't know actually because I, I thought those were the the ones when they showed on the documentary. I thought those were his. I could be wrong. I'm not sure if those are the actual boots or his family has them. I'm not sure. I would love to know. <laughs> yeah, it'd be interesting, wouldn't it? But yeah, I mean, you know, there's got to be some sort of Hall of Fame that he can go in because, you know, probably, yeah, he deserves it. Why not? He, he had a company where I own says he weren't unsuccessful, but he weren't successful. He, were, he ran at a loss, but, you know, he had some big names. I don't know how you'd rate it. But yeah, there's probably some com- some Hall of Fame somewhere that he'd be eligible for, I would imagine. Yeah, that's true. But uh, we'll, stick it, we'll stick him in the OWL Hall of Fame. I, the OWL Hall of Fame? Yeah. Um, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I think we should uh, we should start one. Actually, funny you say that. The first two Hall of Famers were. I did have one. But I haven't done one since. First two inducted was Chris Helix and Plarby. You see, so now if we 
re reignite the tradition. And every year we can have the OWO Hall of Fame, and I think everybody should be able to nominate somebody they think is worthwhile. Okay. I thought and you can you can decide as as the grand leader of us all. If I ever do that again, I I, I might. I'm not sure because uh, um, I didn't do it again because one is just like I didn't feel like we needed to do another one because one we were still new, so no one knew who we were. So I was still like thinking like, ah, eh, why do another one? And now, as you mentioned, I was like, that's actually not a bad idea, but. Who will we put in? I know Darren Corbin's going to say put me in it. I know that for a Definitely. fact. Him and Petrov have got to go in. Oh, Petrov, yeah. He, yeah Petrov a big help. But we see we could all suggest a celebrity or a famous wrestler or somebody wrestling related and then maybe put a poll on the OWO Facebook page, which I'm shamelessly plugging for you, and then <laughs> people can vote. Okay, I'll think about it. I'll think about it. I'll give that to some thoughts. Uh, not a bad idea, actually. I'll think I about have it. Them. I have them. <laughs> I have good ideas now and again. <laughs> well, Maniacs, thank you guys for watching our review of the UWF and Herb Aprons. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed. And also, thank you, Richard, for being on this review once again. Thank you for having me. And remember, drugs are bad. It, it definitely. This is definitely like the biggest drug PSA ever. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. Yeah, we, we, we make jokes, but at the same time, I want to say rest in peace to Herb Abrams. You will be missed. And uh, thank you for giving us a good memory to remember you. And uh, I and I hope uh, I hope you, you rest easily. I hope, like, I, I hope the rest of your family is doing good, too, if they're watching. Uh, but uh, right now, if he never gets in the Hall of Fame, you're a Hall of Famer to us, and we love you. Yeah. But, uh, Richard, where can we find you on Twitter? At Pete Rick. You yeah. ask me this every time, and I always get a brain <laughs> fart and forget it. I'm pretty sure it's at Pete Rick. It's, it is, it is. I just yeah, I, I just keep saying that now just to see if you even remember now. <laughs> yeah, I need, I need to start Twittering. <laughs> You see, I'm the complete opposite of David Starr. He's really good at Twitter. I'm really crap at Twitter. I'm not that much of a Twitter guy either. I mean, once in a while I'll post, but not often like I do on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, I'm more of a Facebooker, but I don't really have an OWO page or anything for Facebook, so it's all YouTube for that, really. Uh, maybe maybe one day you will have one. Maybe it's, it's, it's a possibility. You could start one. Mm, I might, uh, yeah, I might do actually. And also, Richard has a web uh, merchandise website. What's the website called? It's on uh, Spreadshirt. Um, just type in Rick Pete, and it will bring you up to some of my funky designs. Or instead of typing up, is in the link down below. Go click on it, buy some shirts, go support my buddy. Yeah, treat yourself, treat your girlfriend, treat somebody else's girlfriend. <laughs> I don't have a merchandise store yet. Still working on that. Um, I, see. I might try pro wrestling tees. I might. Uh, no promises though. But um, also follow me on Twitter at OWFan19. And also go like the Oregon Wrestling Observer Facebook page and also subscribe to me on Oregon Wrestling Observer on YouTube. But that's not all. Go subscribe to Richard on YouTube. He's got two YouTube channels. One of them's called Rick Peak and the other one, OWO UK. That's where you get to see this video. Yep. <laughs> we both do the reviews. We both upload them on both of our channels. Yeah. That's, and, and I've been having so much fun doing these reviews. Tonight is the Road Warriors documentary. Yeah, that's, that's going to be really good. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Should be able to get a review done in this one in the next couple of days. Yeah, and uh, hoping that we could do that. If not, uh, just be patient because sometimes we've been we're doing other things before we even do the review. So yeah, uh, even so though there's lockdown, we still kind of tend to lose track of time. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I, that's been kind of a thing now since this whole thing that's been going on. Yeah, but but you know, if that there. does happen for everybody, please be patient. 
we're trying to remember our schedule sometimes, but so just be patient and uh, you have don't a schedule. Huh? You have a schedule. Yeah, I have a schedule. I, I just bumble my way through each day. And the schedule is trying to remember. <laughs> <laughs> that's my schedule. Because I do other videos besides this one. So yeah. that's another thing. And I, I forget to sometimes. Yeah, we, we, we do have a lot of pretend to juggle projects at the same time, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> But thank you, Maniacs, for watching. We do appreciate it. We love you, Maniacs, so much. Have a good night. Stay safe out there and wash your hands. And again, what Richard say, say no to drugs. Love you guys. Take care. <laughs>